With temperatures up, precipitation down, and snowpack elusive, four consecutive years of drought have tested California's metal. The allocation of surface water that they're getting this year is one of the lowest on record. Golden State farmers and ranchers have weathered a mix of legislative, environmental, and conservation initiatives designed to minimize the impact of dwindling resources in the face of water use priorities formulated over a century ago. They have a really complicated legal system for water in California. It's what's called a hybrid system. They have riparian water rights, which means if you live next to the river, you can take it. They also have what's called prior appropriation, which means if you got there first, first in line, first in right, and anybody who comes later doesn't get it if there isn't enough. With major sources of water like the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta already spoken for, agricultural producers and municipalities throughout the state are going to the well again to quench their thirst. According to government data, up to 75% of California's water supply is dependent on groundwater. Skeptics say even an ideal winter with potential for an El Nino weather system won't rain down enough nourishment for exhausted earth. Still, the tide could turn if vast reserves of H2O sitting offshore are tapped. We know this drought will end one day. Mother Nature's not telling us when, but it will. And we know on a future date we'll have another drought. And, and the question is, is there a role for desalinated water during the interim? While the technology came to the West Coast a generation ago, the notion of a saltwater stockpile quickly evaporated due to weather shifts and massive operational expenses. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And the city of Santa Barbara is investing $55 million to reactivate the mothballed Charles Meyer desalination plant. The municipality plans to use the more than two decade old facility to provide a third of its drinking water to parched residents by fall 2016. Here's where the reverse osmosis membranes are. And that separates uh, the brine, the salt water, and the ocean water from fresh water. But the move has drawn the ire of local environmentalists. Santa Barbara Channel Keeper, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to protect and restore the Santa Barbara Channel and watersheds, has taken issue with the potential $4 million plus in annual taxpayer burden. Since this plant was built 25 years ago, the technology is obviously extremely outdated and the intake of, is of particular concern because it's an open ocean intake with a screen on it. And it's been proven that there are pretty significant impacts on marine life from the open ocean intake. Project managers for the retrofit counter that new screens will prevent all but microscopic life from entering the intakes. And the salty brine byproduct is removed by the city's wastewater treatment plant before being heavily diluted and discharged back into the deep. We're doing amazingly well here in the city of Santa Barbara in terms of water conservation, over 25% water conservation on average. Uh, that's better than most places throughout the state. It is expensive to create desalinated water. It is worse to have no water. But Channel Keeper continues to push for alternatives, citing efforts more than 200 miles down the coast. The Orange County Water District is currently engaged in the largest indirect potable reuse project in the world. Throughout California, sewage is recycled for irrigation. However, in this case, the district's groundwater basins are pumped full of treated wastewater, where it filters through sand and gravel, eventually yielding water clean enough to drink. The bounty fills 20% of the needs for the district's 2.4 million residents. Cheers. While certain innovations may be tough to swallow, renewable energy is playing a key role further south. In Carlsbad, construction is underway on what is being billed as the largest solar-powered desalination plant in the world. The $1 billion facility, operated by Boston, Massachusetts-based Poseidon Water, is projected to provide San Diego County with 50 million gallons of drinking water per day by the time the Santa Barbara project is online. For every two gallons that go in, we get one gallon of fresh water. And one gallon Poseidon Water officials say the privately financed project will provide nearly 3,000 jobs between construction, full-time positions, and indirect employment to inject over $5 million in tax revenue annually into local coffers. Next door to Santa Barbara in Ventura County, Cam Rosa Water District is taking brackish groundwater, too salty to drink or use for irrigation, and desalinating it for drinking water. We're in drought, 
and this is a new supply of water that didn't exist a year ago. So it, uh, it helps out. Ten years in the making, the program protects water providers from price increases. We're doing a million gallons a day. For Cam Rosa to supply its 35,000 customers, the district must pay the state nearly $1,200 per acre foot for potable water and $500 per acre foot for non-potable water. The real process takes place inside these doors. Desalinated water fit for human consumption is produced on site for around $1,100 per acre foot, a relatively fixed expenditure against a backdrop of rising costs. This is Camrosa's water reclamation facility. Everything in here, the product, the byproduct, is put to beneficial use. By recycling wastewater for agricultural use, the utility helps local farms remain resilient during dry times. A variety of crops are cultivated in Ventura County and throughout the region, which also reaps the benefit of Camrosa's forward thinking. Once it's here, the good water, once it's cleaned up somewhat, flows over the weirs, and that's what becomes the recycled water. And as you can see, the scum or the solids in this process start accumulating toward the center, and then they will be processed and pumped to our drying beds where they will be shipped to Bakersfield for fertilizer. Though saturated with the misfortune of drought, homegrown solutions are creating a wellspring of rewards in California. Desal is definitely part of a solution. It's not the silver bullet. Uh, there is no silver bullet, but, but I can't see any way around expanding desal in, in coastal areas to, to meet the, the gap between supply and demand. Some answers to the problem remain controversial, but one thing is certain. The nation's top agricultural producing state is not giving up without a fight. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.